Well, hello there, me hearties, and welcome to another episode of Heart Scales. I am Trinity Hart, co-host of the educational, lighthearted, and fun, super cool podcast called the Heart Plus Moon Hogcast with my good friend who goes by Susie Moon, and I am also co-founder of Heart Scales, a small snake breeding venture with my husband who goes by Dex Heart on this channel, where we value optimal rather than minimal standards for breeding and care, and producing beautiful, well-structured, healthy and handleable hog noses. Later this year, we will be brewmating our hog noses for the first time, and we'll be sharing how we will be doing that and keep you updated on how all of our snakes are doing. And then next year, we plan to pair our first two hog nose snakes, and I cannot tell you how flippin' excited I am to see my first self-produced clutch of little hoggies. But today, we're talking about snakes in general. Specifically, some common myth conceptions about snakes that I intend to not only debunk for the umpteenth time as a fellow reptile tuber who is part of a community of awesome reptile people who have already done much work to help debunk the junk, but to absolutely annihilate these myths so that we can move on to the really important stuff, which is enjoying and keeping snakes together. In order to do this, I'm going to use objective facts provided by scientific study and analysis from experts in biology and zoology and more, and we'll explain the why behind the what for each debunking. For those looking to go a step further, and for myself to be a responsible and credible source of information, I will provide five references for each debunked myth that you can then read at your own leisure. If you ever have a question for me or want to learn more about hog noses, or any of the other animals that I keep, my door is always open. As long as the conversation can stay kind, please feel free to hit me up anytime. My Instagram account is just my name, Trinity underscore heart. Let's get to myth number one in this series and start destroying these ongoing pieces of baloney. A slit pupil means the snake is venomous, right? Wrong. You might think that this is old news and no one could possibly believe that anymore, but a quick Google search on this topic reveals that is not the case. And I think the big misunderstanding is really caused by a lack of knowledge about why pupils are shaped the way they are in the first place. So the myth persists, but that's what I'm going to tackle today by way of a little biological education. Let's start by learning a bit about the eye. At a basic level, almost all eyes work in much the same way. Pupils, which are the black holes or opening in the middle of an iris, which is the colored part, lets light into the retina. The retina is a layer of tissue at the back of the eye where photoreceptors transform that light into electrical signals that travel to the optic nerve in the brain. It is there that our brains turn these light signals into the imagery that we see when we have typically working eyes. Now, the muscles within the iris can make the pupil dilate, grow big, or constrict, shrink down, to alter the amount of light entering the eye, which inevitably also alters the shape of the pupil. Humans and many other animals, including some that may surprise you, such as tigers, wolves, Elephants, rodents, and many species of reptiles, such as my beloved hognose snakes, all have circular pupils. And this is because the muscles in the iris are arranged into a ring, which contracts evenly in towards the center. The benefit of this is mainly the even focus across our whole field of view. In contrast, vertical slit pupils have two additional muscles that will compress the opening laterally or from the side which much more drastically affect the amount of closure the pupil gets, creating that vertical slit. Vertical slit pupils may change their area up to 300-fold, depending on the animal, whereas our human circular pupils can only change by around 15-fold. So now that you have an idea of how the eye works, let's look at the reasons why animals have pupils that are shaped differently. Much study has shown us that the shape of an animal's pupil is heavily dependent on their ecological niche and their time of activity. It is also associated very strongly with whether an animal is a prey animal or a predator, and whether their predator is an active forager, which is one that searches for prey as it moves around a habitat, or an ambush forager, which is one that lies in wait for its prey to come to it. 
horses have horizontal slit pupils, which, along with the placement of their eyes on either side of their heads, a trait commonly seen in prey animals, gives them a panoramic view of the space around them. This is a pretty major advantage when you must be able to spot a predator advancing on you while you're just trying to eat some grass. Cats can either have vertical slit pupils or circular pupils, and both have their advantages. Circular pupils give cats binocular vision, which is fantastic for judging distances. Typically, larger cats will have circular pupils because they are higher up off the ground and can see farther away. Generally speaking, shorter cats are more likely to have vertical slit eyes because they cannot see as far as the larger cats and they are closer to the ground. So these slit-shaped pupils give them much finer depth discriminations along the ground, clearly an advantage in their particular niche. Species that require more light regulation, such as small cats that can be active both at night and during the day, sometimes referred to as cathemeral, may require elongated pupils with those additional lateral muscles that allow for much more dilation and constriction. That gives them that dynamic range of sight in dim conditions, bright light, and all the way to pitch black. Activity at night means that you are more likely to have a slit pupil, and being a predator also means that you are more likely, though not guaranteed, to have a slit pupil, especially if you hunt low to the ground and need more defined images to spot your prey. Snakes, being typically low to the ground and predatory, as well as very often nocturnal, they would of course be one of the species that most often has vertical slits because all of these factors help to determine the shape of your pupils. Notice, nowhere does having venom glands have any role in the evolution of your pupil's shape. All of this has to do with what you need to see and when you need to see it. That is why you can see pretty plainly that plains hognose snakes, which have circular pupils, are indeed venomous, while reticulated pythons, which have vertical slit pupils, are non-venomous. And there you have it, myth one destroyed by science. I hope you enjoyed this video. I intend to make several more similar videos in this new series, and I intend to take a slightly different approach to debunking common myths about snakes by teaching and sharing objective facts. Let me know in the comments what myths you'd like to have destroyed about snakes. Thank you as always for watching everybody, and don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and acquire snakes. Bye bye now. Say hi. There you go. Good baby.